communities across the country on high alert tonight, waiting for the verdict in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. The video of Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's neck for over nine minutes, prompting global protests last summer. But Chauvin's fate now comes down to a group of 12 men and women. Joining me now is jury consultant Richard Gabriel. He has worked on multiple high-profile trials, including Casey Anthony, O.J. Simpson, and Phil Spector. Richard, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to have this conversation with you. You know, you've been following this trial and analyzing the, the 12 jurors' backgrounds and statements. You're interested in two of the jurors in particular after hearing the defense argument. Explain that, please. Well, each side is looking at their own jurors in this case, hoping that they will carry the water for them in this case. And so they're looking back at the voir dire, they're looking at their juror questionnaires that they filled out for a juror to hold on to me in this jury deliberation room. Juror number 92, the prosecution is saying, look, they were terrified of the, she said she was terrified of the police dismantling in, in the defund police movement. Uh, she's, they're counting on her being very pro-police. They, uh, there's another juror, 85, who says that she, you got to respect the police and do what they say. Juror number 55, uh, scared of the BLM protests. And also looking at the chemist and the nurse, also to hopefully help uh, on that causation issue. In other words, it, are there other causes for George Floyd's death? Mm -hmm. On the defense side, there's a couple of sort of key issues that we, they, we look at in jury selection. Juror number 89, uh, juror said, boy, they knelt too long, and he knelt too long on George Floyd. Juror number 96, uh, sounds like Derek Chauvin took a different role than the number 115. Uh, was that in his training? He commented on that, as if it, somehow this was outside of his training. And juror number 27 talked to a friend and said, that could have been me. Mm -hmm. The defense in this, uh, in this case Today, in the closing arguments, talked about the difference between perspective and, um, and perception. And each side is looking at which is the perception and which is the perspective that each of those groups of jurors are hopefully going to be looking at. Are they going to be looking at it from Derek Chauvin's point of view? Are they going to be looking at it from, from the bystanders who are actually watching this well, thing that, go down? Well, you, that leads me directly to my next question, because eight of the 12 jurors told the court that Police in their community make them feel safe. That is their perspective, right? Is that going to be a challenge for the prosecution? It's always a challenge. In other words, that's why I think the, the prosecution has made this very specifically about Derek Chauvin. Because let's face it, it is difficult for them to think of someone who is supposed to protect them that has possibly violated their oath violated their duty, it makes them feel unsafe. So they're, that is a thing that the prosecution is counting on to hopefully put them in the perspective of, can they look at it from Derek Chauvin's point of view? Was he feeling threatened? Was his attention drawn to the, to the crowd at that point? And somehow, uh, as you, that's why you heard all those arguments today from the defense about this is what a reasonable officer would have done in this situation. So it's, it's a big concern for the prosecution. One of the female jurors in uh, her 20s said she was very excited to get the summons for, for this case. Should either side be encouraged or discouraged by that, that someone was excited to get the summons? <laughs> Typically, the defense is a little nervous when I've worked on the defense side. I am very nervous about jurors who are excited to be there because be in jury duty. And when they're there, usually it's because they want to do something. And this brings me to an important issue. The case that the jurors have is, is very difficult. They have to not only tease out the difference between what they knew about it before they were uh, sat as jurors in this case, but they also have to tease out this enormous social pressure, including Maxine Waters, if they heard that. But they know the world is watching them. So that's the challenge that the jurors are doing is, how can I focus on this evidence and also the personalities of these other jurors? It's a diverse group. They've got to work with each other to somehow come through a consensus. What if some people don't like each other and the personality differences clash? That can affect deliberations as well. So it's a big challenge. Yeah, and it all comes down. Well, the judges plays a big part in it, but it really all comes down to the jury, especially right now. Richard, thank you. Appreciate your perspective. We'll have you back.